Good morning and welcome to Sunday service. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the pastor is Reverend Dr. Fred Leibman. Today we'll have a guest preacher, our own homegrown seminarian, Andrew Mullet. And the music director is Dr. Sunny Mabel. I'm the liturgist, my name is Diane Devitt. And the technical assistants today are Betty Chen right here. Upstairs is Rama and Daryl helping with the Zoom people. Thank you so much. Today is the second Sunday past Pentecost. It's also Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all the new fathers, the older fathers, the stepfathers, the people who act as fathers, and like me, people with deceased fathers who are in heaven looking down on us also. It's also another big holiday, which is Juneteenth, which falls today. Um, I was researching this to find out more about it, and the main thing that I learned was that um, actually Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves with the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, but a number of states did not acknowledge that or go with that, so the Union Army had to send people into states that were not complying and not freeing the slaves, and the slaves didn't even know they were free in those states. So the guy who started, who did this thing was called, was Reverend, oh, Reverend, he wasn't a Reverend, he was a General, General uh, Gordon Granger, and he went into Texas to Galveston, and he repeated the Emancipation Proclamation, and he went through the streets with the army but to back him up and said, you people are all free. Don't, don't know it, but you're free. And that was on June 19th of 1865, so two years later after they really were freed. And then Amelia Everett shared with me today that uh, furthermore, afterward, some of the slave owners and plantation owners forced the slaves to sign contracts to renew for a certain period of time. So it really didn't end quite right away, but a bit later, and thank you for sharing, Amelia. So happy Juneteenth to all. Uh, let's pray. Please pray for Billy Banks, Constance Radu, Dora Shia, Ann Sandiger, Rosemary Wedig, the Reverend Willie Salmond, Rama and his family following the celebration of Rama's dad, Reverend Alfred Siegel, who died recently. All of these people have illnesses. Hannah Basus has been discharged from Forest Hills Care Center after three months of rehab after a fall. You can call her at her home number, which is printed on the bulletin. We have probably have it at home. Um, there's going to be a Scooches concert with Bettina Wingenator. I don't see her today. She's been coming. There's going to be a Scooches concert. Friday, June 24th at 7 p.m. at the church. It's part of the Queen's Rising series, and it's going to include the whole band, right? Mm -hmm. The whole Scooches band. And Sonny, you're going to participate as yes. well? Yes. Are there kids participating too? All, all are welcome to come. Um, I don't believe there are any kids performing, but it's a, it's a great band. I hope, you, I hope you can join. And that's also in honor of um, Juneteenth. Uh, they, were, they were saying great. it's related to that okay. as well. Okay. Thanks very much. Sure. And uh, Reverend Fred asked me to remind you all that the church office will be closed tomorrow for Juneteenth uh, as the official federal holiday, and it will be closed, and it will resume on Tuesday. Let me add my welcome to all to the Church in the Gardens this Sunday, June 19th, Juneteenth, Father's Day, and the celebration of the baptism of Wesley Ellis. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Special welcome to those joining us on Zoom, and a very special welcome to all fathers and to all who play such a role in the life of another. Uh, quickly, two matters by way of update and housekeeping. Uh, first, many of you know I came back from a short vacation 
uh, yesterday to find, as you did this morning, that our rainbow banner declaring a just world for all has yet to be reposted uh, following it being torn down, as we know, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, my understanding, not my understanding, I know it because I saw it, I stumbled on it as I walked into my office, almost literally, the new banner has arrived, uh, but it didn't arrive until very late last week, so we'll get it up uh, early this coming week. And secondly, I, like you all, look forward to our guest preacher, our own member and seminary student, Andrew Moat, uh, preaching this morning. I apologize to him and to all of you for a typo in the weekly announcement. His sermon is titled, Justice Shall Rise from the Ashes, as we'll see on the slide when that comes along. We're gathered together in the spirit. We are one in Christ, and so let us pray. On this Father's Day, when we celebrate fathers and family, all parents and all who serve in a fathering or supporting role for others, on this Juneteenth, when we remember both the injustice to and celebrate the testimony to life and justice from members of our own human family, and on this Baptism Sunday, when we celebrate our God who calls us and marks us as God's own. O God of life and love, O God of justice, instill in us hope, ignite in us the sacred courage to live out and proclaim your good news. Use us to renew hope for love and justice in and for your people and world. And let everybody say, Amen. 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 Please join me in the call to worship. I'm one, you are all. As a deer longs for flowing streams of water, our souls reach out to seek our God. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, our voices lift toward our God. As deep calls to deep, come to worship the living God. Good morning, everyone. Let us all uh, turn to our pilgrim hymnals. It should be in your pews close to you. It's either blue or red, and you can turn to hymn number 466 or simply follow along on the screen in front of you. It's our tradition here to stand and sing loudly our opening hymn.
join me in the prayer of confession, I will begin. We have not learned to love you as you show us, O oh God. Fear seeks to be our constant companion. It blocks our vision. Fear invites us to believe the easy lie. Rather than the hard truth that is necessary for change. For life in your kingdom. Forgive us for choosing the easy lies and ignoring your truth. Be with us in this time of silent reflection. and be with us as we sing. chapter on baptism in the letter of the Romans to the Romans chapter 5, St. Paul writes, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. God's grace promises us our church, our nation, our world, the glory of transformation through the acknowledgement of our need for it. New life awaits, St. Paul writes, Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So, receive grace, embrace transformation, and enter into new life in Christ. And let everybody say amen. 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 And let us share the peace of Christ one with another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also, and also with you. you. Peace. Peace. Peace of the Lord. Peace. Let's start cleaning up. Thanks. And I'd like to invite I'd like to invite everybody to sit down except Wesley. I'd like to invite him to come forward and bring his parents with him. All right. And we're going to fall in right, just right here. Are, are the godparents here? Okay. And godparents get ready. Stay where you are. I'm going to ask you to stand up at some point. And, uh, good. In God's time. And in the time made sacred by the people of God, we celebrate the holy baptism of Wesley on this Father's Day, acknowledging the importance of fathers and father figures and of family in all of its manifestations for all of us. And we celebrate on Juneteenth. Historical records and personal testimony tell us that for many black churches, Juneteenth was and remains a day for baptism and renewal of baptism, 
a day to remember and call ourselves to new life and renewed life in the God who makes life and life abundant available for all. The church welcomes children just as Jesus Christ welcomes them. And the Gospels is the story about the people bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them. And the disciples of all people. Who ever heard of church people doing anything wrong? <laughs> the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus saw it, was indignant, and said, Let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Truly I say to you, who does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. The sacrament of baptism is an outward and visible sign of God's love that holds and enfolds us all. The good news that God created us and calls us to live as beloved children together is for all. Baptism with water and the Holy Spirit is the mark of our acceptance into the body of Christ the sign and seal of our participation in God's forgiving and healing kingdom and the beginning of our growth into full Christian faith and discipleship. According to almost two millennium, millennia long tradition, I have questions for the parents, the godparents, and for all of us who are gathered. We'll begin with the parents. I should say your names, Danielle and Jason. Do you desire to have Wesley baptized into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, say we do. We do. Will you encourage him to turn from the ways of separation and chaos and turn to the way of seeking the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say we will with the help of God. Will you teach Wesley to follow in the saving and healing way of Jesus Christ? Yes. No. Do you promise, one last question, do you promise according to the grace given you to grow with Wesley as a disciple of Christ, to help him be a faithful member of the body of Christ by celebrating Christ's presence, by receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, by embodying God's kingdom in the world, and by offering the nurture of the Christian church so he may affirm his baptism, if so say we do, with the help of God. We do, with the help of God. Amen. And now I turn to the godparents, if you're willing and able to stand, or, or if not, I'll just talk to you. Thanks. Hey, you got somebody with you. All right. And I'll ask you to respond simply, we do. Do you as godparents promise diligently to journey with this child and these parents in the fulfillment of their covenant that Wesley be instructed in the way of Jesus Christ? Amen. You may be seated. And now I address the whole congregation and I hope we can get your response pulled up. My question to all who are gathered here and on Zoom, whether in the neighborhood or around the nation and world, my question to all who are gathered, do you, the members and friends of this church, representing the whole Church of Christ, receive this child, Wesley, into your love and care? Do you promise that so far as in you lies, you will uphold and encourage the parents in their fulfillment of their covenant? Please we say, do. we do. Wonderful. Now let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the gift of creation called forth by your saving word. Before the world had shape and form, your Holy Spirit moved over the waters of creation. Out of the waters of creation, you formed the firmament and brought forth the earth to sustain all life. In the time of Moses, your people Israel passed through the Red Sea from slavery to freedom and crossed the flowing Jordan to enter the promised land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus the Christ, who was nurtured in the water of Mary's womb, baptized by John in the water of the Jordan, became living water to the woman at the well in Samaria, washed the feet of his disciples with water, and sent them forth to baptize all nations 
by water and the Holy Spirit. By your Holy Spirit now, O oh God, bless this water. By your Holy Spirit, save those who confess the name of Jesus Christ that sin may have no power over them. Create new life in the one who is baptized this day that he may rise in Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. So you all know in a spirit of abundant caution I've asked one of our parents to apply water to Wesley as I say the words of holy baptism. We do things differently in these times. And let me ask, by what name will your child be called? Please come forward and, and one of you apply the water to Wesley as I say the words. Wesley, child of God, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, mother and father of us all. Amen. And now according to tradition, we do a laying on of hands and I've said I'm gonna lay my hands somewhere on the leg or so of Wesley. <laughs> Wesley, child of God, the Holy Spirit be upon you and within you and all around you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we pray together, you all can look on with me, we pray together our final prayer. O oh God, we give thanks to you, O oh God, for the gift of this child, Wesley. We pray that he would ever know your steadfast love, healing power, and the gifts of your Holy Spirit. We pray for his family and for this church family that we would live and love as the body of Christ to offer hope and healing in your world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In the name of Jesus and all things bright and beautiful, we give a hand to our new brother in Christ. Amen. In the good old days, the uh, pastor would hold him up. He's fast asleep. I don't know that we want to hold him. <laughs> the lasting arms. Listen for the word of the Lord. The first lesson is from Psalms, Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And the second lesson is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 13. And now faith, hope, and love remain, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Good morning, church in the gardens. I am seminarian Andrew Moet of Union Seminary, Theological Seminary. Before I begin, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Father's Day. To all the current and soon to be fathers out there, or those in the fatherly roles, we are given one of God's greatest gifts. Guide your children well and show them that you love them often. I also want to give a shout out to my cousin Fred in Scotland, who's hope hopefully watching right now. He has been both a brother and a father to me. My text this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 13. And now, faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This morning, we celebrate the national holiday of Juneteenth. It is known as America's second Independence Day. It marks the emancipation of enslaved African Americans in 1865 at the end of the Civil War. It has been unofficially celebrated for many years. Now, Juneteenth is an official holiday thanks to the Biden administration. We as Christians must ensure that God's freedom and justice is realized by everyone, everywhere. Love for thy neighbor is one of our most vital Christian practices. Sadly, it has not always been the case here in America. As witnessed in Buffalo, Laguna Woods, Uvalde, and Tulsa, Evil and hatred have materialized in their ugliest forms. We are called as God's agents to counter such events with love and grace whenever and wherever possible. In fact, this morning I want to speak to you about an event that has been neglected in American history, but marks a painful reminder of how much of God's work still needs to be done. Beloved, I want to take you back 101 years to speak of the prayerful congregation of Mount Zion Baptist Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, Mount Zion was a devout and prosperous church. It was anchored in Tulsa's Greenwood District. Affluent African Americans formed a tight-knit community there. In fact, Greenwood was called the Black Wall Street by Booker T. Washington. Greenwood was part of the Tulsa oil boom and the entire community enjoyed the benefits of the revenues. However, on Tuesday, 31 May 1921, Memorial Day holiday weekend, a white lynch mob had gathered outside the local courthouse hoping to nab 19-year-old African-American Dick Rowland. He had been accused of sexual assault the evidence against him was weak. However, 
In those Jim Crow days, a black man could be guilty of anything. Word got out in the community about the mob's intent. 50 Greenwood men arrived on scene to protect Roland. Many were World War I vets, and they came armed. Shots were fired. Then, as the national records indicate, all hell broke loose. The Greenwood men fled and were followed by a vengeful white mob. House by house, street by street, block by block, the mob shot, looted, murdered, and torched everything and everyone in sight. Smoke and fires rose in the area as the mob's size increased. Mount Zion's congregants and their neighbors hid in basements, attics, crawl spaces as night fell and conditions worsened. Lawless chaos ensued. In those dark hours, the people prayed for God's protection. We can almost hear the 23rd Psalm whispered in the shadows as the sixth commandment was betrayed and white Tulsa turned on its neighbors. Law enforcement and the fire department never materialized. Divine preservation became Mount Zion's only hope and protection. In the darkness, men, women, and children surely repeated, God is our refuge and strength. He is our ever-present help in times of trouble. God is with us and or dress. Later, the National Guard arrived. They deployed machine guns that struck Mount Zion's church, and it burned to the ground. Overhead, military planes dropped explosives onto what was left of Greenwood. It would mark in history the first aerial bombardment of an American city. The next day, the shooting stopped. Over 35 blocks were razed. 1,256 homes have been burned, looted, and destroyed. Nearly 300 citizens were murdered. However, amidst all that chaos and suffering, the people of Mount Zion stood as one. The next Sunday, released from prison camps, the survivors gathered in the smoldering basement of the church to worship. I am certain that they thanked God for their deliverance, prayed for the lost, and asked the Almighty to restore their lives and certainly to bring forth justice in the aftermath. The congregation found perseverance and slowly rebuilt Greenwood brick by brick. Now, Tulsa behaved like nothing had ever happened. And America didn't seem to care either. 
American justice can be fickle. But 100 years, 101 years on, Mount Zion has been completely resurrected. It remains a vital and prayerful source of inspiration for everyone. With God's strength and guidance, Mount Zion restored their congregation, rebuilt their church, and revitalized their community. However, I dare say that the other national tragedy here is that no reparations have ever been offered to Greenwood by anyone. Nothing at all. But Mount Zion has remained a steadful source of Christian fellowship. So, as like-minded Christians and dedicated people of God, what can we learn from Mount Zion and the events of Greenwood? First and foremost, the congregation had faith that God would protect them when their city and government did not. They had faith that the good shepherd would guide them through the valley of death. God was with them then and now. And ultimately, Mount Zion still had faith that God will see that justice is finally done. Of course. We know that justice does not happen in real time or on time or just in time or even in a lifetime. But we also remember that justice is always served in God's time. Through it all, Mount Zion has held on to the intangible power of hope. Hope that God would keep their spiritual flame alight. Hope that God would offer them the means to survive and rebuild. Hope that wounds would be healed and most especially they held on to hope that federal authorities would answer their pleas for justice. Now, Mount Zion has been praying for 101 years now. And here at the Church in the Gardens, we also believe in the power of prayer. So if they pray, and you pray, and I pray, and we all pray, well, that's a lot of prayer. Surely God has something to say about that. And then there is love. The greatest power in our scriptures. In the midst of blazes, bullets, and bombs, Mount Zion knew God's steadfast love would sustain them. And when God's people were marched out at gunpoint, I think it's safe to say they did not like the men who murdered their friends and families. They did not like the soldiers who destroyed their church, and they definitely did not like the cowardly pilots who bombed their homes. However, Jesus has taught them and us, and they loved their enemies. Hate did not trump love in their Christian hearts. Mount Zion embraced what Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King would later call radical love. Indeed, Mount Zion is a faithful, hopeful, and loving church. Even under those unjust and horrifying circumstances, they prayed for those who persecuted them. And they loved those who sought to destroy them. They did not return vitriol, no. 
They chose love and forgiveness towards their neighbors instead. Yet, justice still remains elusive there and in many other cities like Greenwood, but God has said that justice will roll on like a river. For God is the creator of justice. And God has said, blessed are those who wait upon the Lord. So most definitely, God will surely have something done about all that. Beloved, Psalm 37 Verses 28 and 29 say, For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever, but the children of the wicked will be cut off. We have seen much in the last many weeks that creates doubt in our minds about justice. But I say, have faith and love thy neighbor still. All will be righted and God's justice will see, be seen upon all the lands. So I will leave you this morning with the inspiring words of the great Methodist minister, Charles Albert Tinley. Take Courage, my soul, and let us journey on. For though the night is dark, it won't be very long. Thanks be to God, the morning light appears and the storm is passing over. Hallelujah, because justice is going to come for Tulsa, for Atlanta, for Little Rock, for Selma, for Montgomery, for Sanford, for Newark, for Watts, for Detroit, for Ferguson, for Flynn, for Louisville, for Chicago, for Charleston, for Oakland, for Baltimore, for Brunswick, for Brooklyn, for the Bronx, for Queens, the, for Manhattan, for Staten Island, for Minneapolis, for Dallas, for Buffalo, for Laguna Woods, for Uvalde. Beloved, believe me when I say that justice is going to come to your town, my town, uptown, downtown, crosstown, Chinatown, every town. Lord God Almighty will make it so. Indeed, justice is going. All God's people say, Amen. Amen. And now let us respond. Uh, you may or may not have received this on the way in. If you'd like to grab a copy, it's in the back. It's uh, the storm is passing over or you may follow the, the lyrics in front of you. Let us all stand and sing, uh, sing in song.
The church of which you speak has a prayer wall, the remains of that basement wall that was built above. We, we pray and we build on the faith of the family of Christ through all generations. In God's time, we pray with those people then, we pray with them now. We pray with the people of that church now, we pray with everybody who stands on that prayer wall and at all prayer walls around our world. Let us pray. O God of life and new life, O God of love and justice, O God who is in all for all. We thank you for fathers and father figures and for all who model, nurture, grow, and support life and life abundant for all. We thank you for baptism and for the promise of baptism and renewal of baptism for new life in you. We thank you for our preacher this morning. We thank you for all who give testimony and who hear the call for your love and for your justice in our world. We thank you for every way you call your church and equip your church to reflect and to be the body of Christ in and for the world, and we confess for every way your church does not follow your call to reflect and be the body of Christ in and for the world. We thank you for the church in the gardens and for all we do in mission and ministry together to bring wholeness and healing for ourselves and others. We thank you for all of our partners in ministry of all faiths, who model your love for creation and for love and justice for all peoples. We pray for our city, nation, and world that our leaders and all people would be moved to live and act in the way of peace. We pray for the people of Ukraine and for all faith and civil organizations working to bring necessary aid. We pray for all working for the ways that make for peace in that conflict, in our own nation, with our centuries-long hatred and fear, and everywhere in the world where hatred, fear, and violence threaten life and quality of life. And we pray for our own church family with thanks that Hannah has returned home following months in a care facility. For Philia, Connie, Dora, Anne, Jackie, Rosemary, and Reverend Willie, for Rama and his family following the celebration of life, for his dad, Reverend Alfred Siegel, for all who are grieving loss of any kind. All other prayers, O oh God, we bring to you as we hold them in silence or as we call them out aloud now. Hear all these prayers, O God, and hear us now as we pray together as Jesus taught us all to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
difficile. As we enter into the time of the offering, we remember that God calls us through baptism into the body of Christ, into the fullness of the relationship, the creative and caring relationship that is God. And God calls us out in joy to care for ourselves and others, to share and to put into practice God's love and justice in and for the world. All that is ours is from God. And so we respond. If you'd like to donate, there are four ways to make a contribution. You can mail a check to the church, set up a bill payment through your bank to have checks mailed to the church. The church now accepts donations via Zelle. Our name is listed as Church in the Gardens, Forest Hills, New York, and the email to use is treasurer at the sitk.org. And there's a collection plate at the back of the sanctuary for the people that are live.
let's pray. God our Father, we worship and thank you for you are our refuge and strength. You are our help in times of trouble. Thank you, God, for the gift of love. Help us to love as you love and empower us to walk the path love opens before us. Receive our worship and our offering and our thanks by the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Please turn now to your pilgrim hymnals one last time today. This is uh, pilgrim hymnal uh, number 440. Everyone knows the first verse. You might not know the third verse, so, or you could follow along on the screen. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies. Before the blessing, I want to remind us all of the coffee waiting for us uh, downstairs and outside and in the breezeway. We receive the blessing, the ancient blessing, with those ancient words that we were reminded of. God is our refuge and strength, our present help in times of trouble, and the words that the great hymn pleads for. God will take our hand. God will take your hand and lead you on. Let us receive the ancient blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May God look upon you with favor and give you and the whole world peace. Amen. Amen.
everybody.